Welcome to The Standard. From Vancouver, I'm Randall Mark. Tonight, my exclusive interview with author Jan Martel. With one million copies of his book, Life of Pi, sold around the world, Jan Martel has become one of literature's biggest stars. The winner of the prestigious 2002 Man Booker Prize, Martel has a strong interest in exploring the world of spirituality. An illustrated edition of Life of Pi has just been released, and I had the opportunity to chat with Jan Martel about it when he came through Vancouver recently. Well, thanks for coming on our show tonight. This is uh, a real pleasure to have you. Your book, which is about the relationship between a 16-year-old boy who was shipwrecked uh, in, in, on a lifeboat with a tiger, really explores though, some fascinating dynamics of religion and what it means to be human. What I was struck, though, first is that your book was released on uh, September 11, 2001, in Canada, mm -hmm. the day the Twin Towers were attacked. And that was the day, really, that many people started to talk about religion in an open way. You're not shy of talking about religion. You seem to be very open about that. Why? Yeah. Um, because the book's about that, and if I have to talk about the book, I have to talk about it. But you're right that when I started working on this book, I felt it was deeply unfashionable. Here I was, a literary novelist, taking religion seriously, not discussing it to dismiss it. And I thought, God, no one's going to read this book. Mm. It's so unfashionable. Uh, and then you're right, it came out the day these supposedly civilizations clashed. Mm. And suddenly it was kind of fashionable to discuss religion. Still in a very, still discussion of religion tends to ignore its reality and focus on its distortions. Yeah, you talk about, you, you, in one of your interviews I read, you talked about cynicism. It's so easy to be cynical about uh, paper-thin varieties of religion. Absolutely. Uh, but y you wanted to take religion far more seriously in, in, a, in a depth, in a deep way. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't have spent four years just to dismiss some things. Uh, I was interested in looking not so much at religion as looking at faith. Hmm. What do you mean by that? What's the difference for well, you? Well, I mean, religion to me is the practice of faith, but I was more interested in that initial impetus of that initial spark whereby you start believing in something beyond the material. Because we tend to, I mean, after we're, we live in a material world, mm -hmm. uh, um, we're one where ca the link of cause and effect is very obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, so to read about people, to, to write about people who believe beyond the material, suddenly intrigued me when I got to India. Up till then I'd been, I suppose, very much a materialist in the sense of a rationalist, uh, mm. believe in empirical evidence, there's no empirical evidence for faith, therefore it's to be dismissed, uh, which I think is kind of short-sighted. Um, so when I was in India I decided to explore that. What does it mean to have faith? These people who have faith, why do they have it? Mm. It doesn't make sense and you can argue until you're blue in the face with them. Still they continue to believe. Yeah, and What's that about? And you, you explored that person. That's just not about Absolutely. your writing. Uh, where is that for you now? I mean, it, it, does it get a, get a certain uh, ex expression in a certain faith for you? In a broad sense of faith, it does. Because I didn't grow up religiously, I don't have any gut hate of any particular religion, mm. but nor any sort of ancestral Draw attraction or to attraction. One. Okay. Now, being a Westerner, being a Quebecois, you know, ethnically, I suppose I'm Roman Catholic. Did you uh, go to mass growing up at all? No, not at all. My parents are very secular. Uh, of that generation that rebelled against religion in Quebec, the Quiet Revolution. So my parents are quite anti-clerical. Mm. Their whole generation is. Mm. My parents are in their mid-60s. They're very anti-clerical. So uh, at most what I got when I was a child was religion as anthropology. Mm. Like, you isn't know, that interesting? Let's study the people who... A bit. Like, you know, there are people in Papua New Guinea who put, you know, bones through their noses. Mm. And uh, uh, in a sense, Catholics and Jews and Muslims were kind of like that too. These are strange practices. They're not necessarily harmful. But they're strange, mm. they're curious, you know, mm -hmm. we're looking at them from the outside and we don't do this. We have replaced that kind of thinking with other thinking. Mm -hmm. In other words, one God's being replaced by another and in the secular world it's often art or perhaps politics mm -hmm. or, or good citizenship, something like Science that. Science, something Science, like that. Yeah, something yeah. Something like that. And um, my entry point into it is I just got tired of being reasonable. It's mm. really as simple as that. I got to India in my early 30s, I was 33, 34. And I'd studied philosophy at university, which is a really good way to make you anti-religious and very reasonable. Mm -hmm. And I got to India and I finally realized, in a very unconscious way, that this, it was getting me nowhere. Mm -hmm. That just being re reasonable... What do you mean nowhere? Like you said, well, it, it, mean? Wasn't, it, it wasn't giving me a sense of who I was. It wasn't giving me a sense of wholeness. To oh. be reasonable is just into pra it's put into practice a tool 
but, but using a tool doesn't give you a sense of why you should use it. Okay. So for example, a, a, a car, for example, a very concrete example, a car is an incredibly powerful device, but sitting in a car with your foot on the accelerator, there's nothing there that tells you where you should go. Hmm. Whether you should go on a coastal drive or visit your grandmother. Or why or you're even driving in the first place. Or why you're driving in the first place. You have to find something before you step into the car to tell you where to go. Mm. And in a sense, that's what faith does. Whether it's religious faith or another kind of faith, we need faiths to move forward. Hmm. Uh, your, your character, Pi, uh, he begins to take on three distinct Hindu, Muslim, uh, and Christian. Yeah. And yet you... I remember reading you said you didn't want to bring uh, Judaism in because it was mutually exclusive to Christianity. Yeah, you cannot. Isn't, but, but at the core, don't you think that Christianity and, and, and uh, Muslims and Hindus, they would say they're mutually exclusive to other faiths? They would, but there's definitely, you're right, they would. I mean, for example, uh, 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 you know, Muslims are very strongly monotheistic mm -hmm. and they don't believe in showing any incarnations, any images of it. That's idolatry. Well, Hindus do it a galore. There's a thousand gods, mm -hmm. and they're very, you know, vividly expressed in, in religious places. But that, you can argue, that's, that's, those are minor differences. The problem with Judaism, well, not the problem, but the, the, the deferring characteristic of Judaism and Christianity is, you know, Jews are still waiting for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You can't be waiting for the Messiah on the Sabbath, on Saturday, mm -hmm. and then celebrating him on Sunday as a right, Christian. Right. It's really at a very obvious level mm -hmm. uh, contradictory. And yet, even in that one, I mean, there, there's the, the most similarities at some level. No, of course, Judeo you know. Judeo Christian, they're very, very similar. In fact, Christianity is a sect, in a sense, a successful sect of, of Judaism. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the other practical reason he's not a Jew is that there are no, there's no Jewish community in Pondicherry where he was from. Yeah. So the one, w one, one way in the novel I could get Judaism is, is here we have a boy who's a, a Hindu, a Muslim, and a Christian, and he goes to U of T, and what does he study? He studies Isaac Luria. He studies yeah. one of the Kabbalists. So I like this yeah. idea oh, you, of this. He weaved it in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he does end up studying Judaism. Yeah. But no, that's the one I couldn't work in. But yeah. I, I got three other big ones. Yeah.